Back on the RJ Young Show, be joined by Yahoo Sports Combat columnist Kevin Ioli in the next hour, 10.05. That ought to be a lot of fun. Does some outstanding work, uh, and I'm really interested to get his thoughts on UFC 249 going ahead in this, you know, island fights. But I got a college football trade. All right, so we, we had this group chat going, 247 Sports, and the idea was being bad around. Like, if you could trade or get something to fill a need for your team, what would it look like? And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting because naturally my head goes straight to Oklahoma and the holes that they're trying to fill and the surpluses of things that they have. So I go looking through the depth chart like I do and what I feel good about, what I feel bad about, you know, feel like defensive line depth is going to be fine. It's just going to be inexperienced. There's nobody there I really want to move. Safety depth is going to get better. You feel good about the two starters. I don't feel like anybody there you need to move. Thought about Trey Brown because you feel so good about the guys behind him. Not necessarily because Trey Brown is just that expendable. He's not. And then I took a look at wide receiver. I said, oh, okay. All right. Going to be young. Going to be young. Jane Hazelwood. I think that would be a dude worth considering. But the guy that I think you would send is Charleston Rambo to Penn State for Micah Parsons, okay? Now, before you lose your mind, Charleston Rambo, top returning receiver at Oklahoma, 43 catches, right? Number two on the team last year behind one C.D. Lamb. Behind him, Jane Hazelwood, Theo Weiss, Trajan Bridges, Marvin Mims, Drake Stoops, Theo Howard when he's healthy. Obi Obiallo. Right? We can keep going over there. You were going to be young at that position anyway. You were going to ask Charleston to be your dude anyway. And what you would be getting is a guy that has almost twice as many catches than the returning, top returning receiver at Penn State. After KJ Hamler goes, they ain't got a whole lot. Jahan Dotson caught like 22 passes last year. Dude behind him caught like nine. They got five quarterbacks. Not all of them dudes going to be on the team next year. Somebody going to hit the portal. They need help at receiver because other than that, they're going to be running the football with Journey Brown, with Devin Ford, and Noah Kane, who I really love and I think people are sleeping on. But on the other side, they got Mike Parsons. Mike Parsons is all world, okay? Mike Parsons... Rushed for 1,200 yards as a senior in high school. And then goes to play at Penn State and becomes the first consensus All-American linebacker to play for the Nittany Lions since LeVar Arrington. You know where Oklahoma has a need? You know where Oklahoma has need, a need for depth? That will rush in linebacker hybrid. That Kenneth Murray type. Because you're looking at Deshaun White. Put him in red ink as a starter at middle linebacker. Just do it, right? Brian Oden called him the most instinctual linebacker he's ever coached. Then beside him, you're looking at Brian Asamoah, had a bunch of busts last year. Brian Mead, had a bunch of busts last year. Caleb Kelly, hasn't been healthy in three years. Then you're looking at Shane Witter. Early enrollee, I'm high on him, right? I think he needs another year. He's tremendously fast. He's a great athlete, but you lost Ryan Jones to the portal. You lost Levi Draper to Arkansas, all right? And that kiddo coming out of Collinsville was going to be the man. Mike Parsons is a tackling machine. Mike Parsons is a dude you can send to stand up in that foot nine and rush people. And you were probably going to lose Charles to Rambo after this year anyway as a red shirt junior. You're going to lose Mike Parsons after this year anyway. Right, a straight up trade, Mike Parsons, Charleston Rambo, they get a go to wide receiver. Charleston Rambo probably goes for 1,200 yards, over 100 catches in that offense. And then Mike Parsons gets to help lead a team that actually has a chance to compete for a league championship because he ain't going to be playing in the same division as Ohio State. Okay? He ain't going to be playing in the same division as Michigan. Going to be in the same conference as Minnesota, as Iowa, as Wisconsin. It's OU, and then Texas, and then maybe Oklahoma State, maybe, but 
I got questions about their head coach. Like, when he lets his coordinators just go do what they know how to do, they're pretty good. You know? If Casey Dunn gets to call the offense and Jim Knowles gets to call the defense, they might be all right. But when your dude with the Joe Diffie comes in there talking about this is what we're going to do, cover your face with your hands. And then after that, what are you talking about? Baylor? Nope. Rebuilding year. Not even sure if Charlie Brewer's going to make it through the rest of the season. And you're putting in a new offense and a new defense in a year where you ain't getting no spring football? Forget about it. Right? West Virginia? Mm -mm, Nope. Ain't no way. Kansas State? Maybe. But I doubt it because they lost their defensive coordinator to Michigan State. And they also didn't get to work with a new defensive coordinator during spring ball. Kansas? You must be out your mind. You must be crazy. You must be crazy. Texas Tech? Ooh. I felt good about it when it had Jed Duffy. Now you're going to go on Alan Bowman, who ain't been healthy in a year. Right? You're going to lose Jordan Brooks. You, you're going to need some help on the back end because Douglas Coleman is gone. Okay? Keep going down the list, man. Ain't a whole lot there to look at. Ain't a whole lot there to compete with. Michael Parsons shows up. He'd be the preseason defensive player of the year. He'd probably go on to be all Big 12. Probably be another All-American in a league where, my goodness, ain't the defensive talent in this league ain't been great. It ain't been great, man. You talking about Kenneth Murray Jr. crossing your fingers, hoping to die, that he goes first round. I'm not sure that that's even in the cards, but we'll see. Because I'm hearing more cable on chasing than I'm hearing Kenneth Murray. Right? Talking about LJ Collier being the last first round draft pick playing defense in this league. He go to Texas Christian. Okay? That was last year. You talk about Ross Blacklock maybe moving up into the first round. He was a Texas Christian last year, right? The only reason that you're not making an argument, or I'm not making an argument, for Micah Parsons going to Texas Christian because they ain't got nothing to give Penn State. You know what I mean? Ain't got nothing to give them. Meanwhile, hey, look, Charleston Rambo, I don't think anybody wants to come up off of Jaden Hazelwood because I think a lot of people have their feelings caught up in Jaden Hazelwood. But even Jane Hazelwood, I would put on a block for a guy like Micah Parsons. Because it's harder for me to find Micah Parsons than it is Jane Hazelwood. That's just the way the world works. I need outstanding defensive talent before I need outstanding offensive talent. As a matter of fact, I would spend more time trying to convince offensive players to play defense than vice versa. Kind of like Nick Saban. Kind of like the greatest college football coach of all time. That dude went up to Drew Sanders, who was going to play tight end, at Oklahoma and say, hey, why don't you come out here and play outside linebacker? And Drew said, yes. That dude went to Brew McCoy, who was the number one athlete in that 2019 class, who was a top 10 recruit in that 2019 class. As a wide receiver, it's what he wanted to be. Nick Saban said, hey, Brew, why don't you come out here and play outside linebacker? Brew said, kick rocks. <laughs> I'm going to Texas, then I'm going to USC, (laughs) where I'm going to play wide receiver. (laughs) I'm not no linebacker. Matter of fact, Gary Patterson went up to one of his defensive players who was going to play quarterback, play quarterback at Rice. His name is Ty Summers. And he flipped Ty Summers to not just Texas Christian, but flipped him to playing defensive end and then linebacker and then defensive end and then linebacker again. They call that dude Captain America. I'm telling you, I would spend more time trying to get the defensive player to join up than I would the offensive player to join up because I just can't find great defensive talent. And if I can play defense, I can beat you with defense. Defense can score points. (laughs) The defense can score points, and the defense can get me the ball back. Right? You can make it work. Just like James Franklin made it work with Sean Clifford, K.J. Hamler, Noah Kane, Jerdy Brown, and Parts. People keep forgetting they were outstanding defensively. And Michael Parsons was a big reason for that. And they won 11 games. Now they got a new offensive coordinator. Right? Kurt Siroka coming out of Minnesota. They got a new wide receiver coach, Taylor Stubblefield. They trying to break him in. Alex Grinch, Brian Odom, have your hands out. Get grabby. Get grabby. I'm telling you, man, I can do this college football trades thing all the time. It's a lot of fun. 